Good evening. Welcome. I'm so glad that you are able to join us. I am Katrina Schiedemeyer. I am a senior engineer of Supplier Development Engineering at Oshkosh Corporation. It's a really big, long title, and I will talk to you during this presentation about what does my job do and what does it mean. I'll talk to you a little bit about my journey to get to this job. So I'll share with you what school looked like, things that I did to volunteer, and how I prepared myself for the job. And then I'll also talk to you about getting involved in your community. I think it's really important to give back, and so I want to talk about how do you do that and how can some of the activities and leadership skills that you're learning in Girl Scouts help prepare you for the future world. So to give you a quick overview, I am a senior engineer, um, but I don't have a degree in engineering. I actually went to UW Oshkosh and I studied supply chain management. So supply chain management is learning about how to get parts and inventory from suppliers, the people who make the raw material, into our factory so that then we can make the parts, the product, and then we can eventually sell it. So for example, uh, think of something like this pen. So this pen has a lot of components to it. It has things like the ink that fills it up inside, there's the metal and the plastic, there's all kinds of little pieces to it, right? Even something as simple as a spring inside of it. Well, each one of these things comes from a different source. Think about the metal that's here. The metal is made in a very different way than something like this rubber attachment. This rubber attachment would be typically made from somebody who makes non-composites or non-metallic material. They would go ahead and figure out what the dimensions need to be. They would take the rubber and they would form it to make it this shape, this size, and then they would also create all the little ridges on it here that help make it easier for you to want to use. It's a very different process than something like this metal. For this metal, they have to go and take it from the earth. After they take the metal from the earth, they are able to then form it into a big sheet. They take the sheet, they'll cut it, roll it, and make it into something like this. And then someone in their design team will be able to tell us where to put the holes. Someone in engineering might tell us what the spring needs to look like. And then it eventually all gets brought to a manufacturing facility where they'll go and they will start to assemble it. Then they'll put it all together and that's where operations comes into play. So operations will help make sure that everything gets put together, it gets manufactured properly, and then it gets shipped out. And then the supply chain team will be responsible for shipping it and making sure that it gets to Amazon or Target or wherever you're going to go buy your product from. So as you can see, there's a lot of different parts to supply chain. You can be in supply chain, which is the beginning part, working to get the material in the front, or you can be at the end of the part where you're working on shipping and delivery, logistics and transportation. So when you go to school to learn about supply chain, you learn about both parts of it. And I was really excited to learn about supply chain because I believe supply chain is the heartbeat of the company. I think every job at a company is important, but I really liked learning about supply chain because I feel like if you didn't have the right parts coming in the door from the suppliers, ultimately you couldn't make a product. And if you can't make a product, then the companies have no money. So I wanted to work somewhere where I was really responsible for a lot of important things. And I also wanted to work somewhere that was really fast paced. So working in supply chain every day is very different. Some days I'm working on issues um, that impact our entire operations. And other days I'm working on helping to prevent issues from impacting a very small part of the business. So now that you know a little bit about what supply chain is, I'm going to talk about what my job is like. So at Oshkosh Corporation, we make military vehicles, fire trucks, garbage trucks, um, construction lifts, some really cool big equipment. And it's a really fun job because some days at work, you actually get to go for rides inside the vehicles. And it's awesome to be able to go put on your seatbelt, put on all the safety harnesses, and they take you out for a test track, which is essentially like a, a obstacle course that you get to go on inside of some really big military vehicles. And it's really fun to be able to see what it's like to uh, be a person who would be operating our vehicles. So when I started to work at Oshkosh Corporation, I started as an intern. And for those of you who might not know, an intern is a job that you start when you are early on um, in college, typically. 
and you work while you're going to school. So as an intern, you get to learn about the real world. You get to learn about all of these business problems and processes, but it's not forever. Normally an internship, you work there for about three months during the month of summer, you go back to school and then you could come back again as an intern. And that's what I did. So I started to work as an intern in a department called Quality and Continuous Improvement. And in that job, we were responsible for making things more efficient and work faster at our company. So I worked on projects to help make sure that the lights that go on the outside of a fire truck, to make sure that we were getting enough of those lights and that they were being able to be installed properly onto the trucks. I also was able to work in a department um, that was really fun. So we did a lot of uh, activities to do team building, um, very similar to the team building that you might do at some of your Girl Scout activities. Um, we also got to uh, work together with a lot of different people of all different types. So we had people of different ages, different ethnicities, different backgrounds, and I learned a lot from them. Um, one of my coworkers, he was from Iraq, and he was able to teach me a lot about Excel. So he went and he would spend hours with me showing me how to use the tool Excel, how to make spreadsheets fast and efficient. Um, I had another coworker um, who was from Wisconsin and he also was able to teach me things about Excel. So it's kind of cool to see that people in different backgrounds are able to share common skills and help teach you about those things. So after I worked in that department for a little while, I graduated college from UW Oshkosh, and then I went and started to work full-time at the company. And that's where now I found my current job. So I work on our supplier development team. And when I started to work on our supplier development team, I started to work with my boss and my team members on helping make things work faster at our suppliers. So I took all the skills that I learned by helping make things more efficient at our company with the fire truck lights, but now I get to do that with our suppliers. So normally when there's not a coronavirus and pandemic going around, I travel a ton. I travel about 80% of the time all around the world. So I do um, a good portion of my travels in the United States. Um, I get to travel to Florida quite frequently. I uh, go out to eat, out west, um, kind of everywhere in between. Then. I also now travel internationally. So I am able to go help our China team and our team in the Netherlands, um, teams down in Mexico and all around um, learn the things that I know. So I will train them in training classes and I will teach them how to make things more efficient, how to um, work smarter when they're uh, doing things. But then I also get to help them solve engineering problems. So as I mentioned, I don't have an engineering degree but I get to work in engineering. So that's because I've been able to take a lot of extra classes and I've been able to um, learn on my own a lot about engineering concepts. So it's really cool to know that you don't have to be an expert in a specific area in order to work in that field. Um, I think that you can teach yourself the concepts and as you teach yourself the concepts on how to be a strong uh, team player and a great um, a contributor to any project, people are going to want to work with you more. And as you continue to show that you have got those skills, they're going to keep offering you more and more opportunities, which is how I kept getting more training classes. And so it was really exciting for me to go from an individual who didn't know that this career even existed to now working in it and sharing my story with you. So while going to college is important for a job like mine, it's not the only thing that gets you into a role like this. When I was applying for my jobs, there were lots of other people who had very similar backgrounds to me. A lot of them um, even had engineering degrees, they um, had supply chain degrees, they had all kinds of education from all around. But the engineering team that I work on finds it really important for you to have experience outside of just the classroom. So they really want to make sure that you have relevant work experience. So before I started working in the professional world, I worked at Starbucks and I was a barista there. And they wanted to know, what did I do at Starbucks that helped prepare me for this job? So I talked to them about how I was able to use time management to get everyone's drinks ordered and out the door, um, make sure I, I used attention to detail to get the right mixtures, right combinations. Somebody orders a hot chocolate, sure doesn't want coffee in it and vice versa. 
Um, and then I also talked to them about how I worked as a team player. And that's the most important part. Anywhere that you work, you want to work with someone that you can get along with. So making sure that you have really good relationships with people, even the people who are, you're watching this call with right now. So some of your friends or people who are in your Girl Scout troop are people who you'll know for the rest of your life. It's crazy to me how people that I knew when I was five, six, seven years old, all the way up to the time I was in high school, I still cross paths with them today. And it's crazy that you know relationships that you build at such a young age can really make a difference when you're older. So that's where I think it's really important to start developing your skills now. So developing your skills by offering to lead a project for your troop. Can you plan your guys' next activity? Can you think about ways that you can showcase that you have responsibility? By having all of those things will help prepare you for that first job. And that first job will prepare you for your second, third, fourth job afterwards. So I think that's really important. When I was your age, um, I had joined a few different clubs because I didn't know what I wanted to do when I grew up. Um, so I started to volunteer at my local hospital. And I started off by doing things like writing greeting cards for the uh, sick and elderly people who would come through the hospital. And then I decided that I was going to continue to volunteer there. And so I started to work on the surgical recovery floor. And so I worked on the surgical recovery floor. I was able to experiment and see what is it like to actually work in a hospital setting because I wanted to become a pediatrician. So as I started to work in the hospital setting, I quickly learned that it was a really amazing experience, but I didn't want to have to tell someone that they were sick. Every time I had to try and communicate with someone that they were sick, I got really sad. And so instead of communicating that they were sick, I would just be you know, sad and crying and all of those things. Um, so I really quickly learned that that wasn't the right field for me. And that I could continue to give back to people at the hospital by volunteering, but maybe a career as a pediatrician wasn't quite right. So then I also started to join a lot of business clubs at my school. So we had DECA and FBLA, where I was able to learn what the business world was like and see if the business world was something I was interested in. And through my experience there, I learned that it was something that I liked and it was something I was pretty good at. I had joined and became the club president um, I also brought our team to nationals and I ended up placing fourth across the entire world um, for everyone who I was competing against. So I was able to quickly learn that through an experience like this, what was I good at? But if I wouldn't have experimented in all those other different places, my career could be very different than it is today. And so it's important to know what are you good at and what can you have a lot of passion behind? Um, so find something that not only um, is a job that will pay, but you have to be passionate behind it. Because if you're not passionate behind it, you're going to have a really hard time doing it well. And if you have a hard time doing it well, you're probably not going to be very good at it. And so it's just this negative cycle. So I really recommend finding something that you're good at and you can get paid for and uh, making sure that you're really passionate about it. Um, it's also kind of exciting for me to know that inside the business world or inside any profession, it's not just what you do um, during your actual day job. So one of the things that I learned was I was a young professional. Um, I had just graduated college and there were a lot of other people like me at the company, but we often didn't get to hang out with each other and we didn't get to share what we learned or what didn't go well because we often would go to work, go home, and that would be it. So I decided to help create a young professional network so it was a network that we can um, basically have meetings very similar to what you may have at your troop. Um, we can talk about how to network with each other better. We can do really fun things like we play volleyball games together. We play cornhole and we go out to dinner. Um, but then we also talk about how to share our business skills. So there's some people on my team who are really, really strong at um, all different types of algorithm design. I'm not. So by being able to connect with them, they were able to teach me a lot about it. So now I have knowledge in that space. And similarly, I was able to teach them a lot about supply chain when maybe they didn't have knowledge there before. So my company was really great in helping sponsor this. They um, heard what our vision was and they actually gave us money to help fund some of our events. 
And that's where now I'm able to speak with as students like you. So in addition to sharing my story, I'm also able to help learn a little bit more about what you do and help give back to the community. The second thing that I think is really important about when finding a company is making sure that you work somewhere that you like the culture of the company. So when I say the culture, you may be thinking of cultures like a group of people's um, values and their beliefs. And that's exactly what I mean. When you think about a culture um, for a business, it basically is understanding what is the business value and how does what you do fit into that. So for example, uh, my company's culture is a very strong people first culture. So that means that our CEO really believes in giving back to the community. He believes in making sure that we're empowered to do all kinds of really cool projects. And then with that, we are also able to do really great jobs at our jobs. He thinks if we're happy, we're going to work well. If we're working well, then we're going to become a profitable company. And so every day at work, um, we really try to focus in on giving back to the community. So my company actually gives us eight hours that we can just go volunteer. We get paid to go volunteer. And so I do things like I teach junior achievement classes. And I also serve on the board of directors for a few different organizations. Um, some of them you might recognize like The Grand. The Grand is a uh, theater downtown that puts on amazing, amazing Broadway performances, um, different shows. And so I like to be able to help them get their word out and connect people like you. But I also serve on the UW Oshkosh board. Uh, UW Oshkosh's board is very different. It's focused in on helping provide scholarships to students. So I like to be able to serve there and help connect students with scholarships. And then I also serve on a board called Mali Rising. Mali Rising is a board that builds schools in Mali, Africa. So it's very different to work on a board that's working on building schools compared to a board that's like UW Oshkosh that already exists. So by serving on both of those, I'm able to learn a lot of experience and information that maybe I wouldn't normally learn. So I think it's really important that you give back to your community. And you may be wondering, how do you do that? Well, the first way is exactly what you're doing right now. By being part of Girl Scouts, you're able to make so many amazing connections. Um, you do a lot of volunteer work, you're able to give back to a lot of people. So I think that's the first step. The second step then is thinking about what you're passionate about and can you have an idea that will help improve that business. So if I say things like um, volunteering to um, help break leaves for your neighbor, while that is an amazing uh, opportunity that you can do, you also are learning a lot about time management skills. How can you get it done the fastest so you can go inside and play video games or you know, go do crafting or whatever your passion is. But you're also learning about the importance of giving back to helping someone. And maybe your neighbor who you're raking the leaves for um, has a job opportunity in the future or someone she'd like to connect you with. You never know who you're going to come in contact with. So I really recommend always putting yourself out there, seeing what can you do to make the world a better place. And if you can make the world a better place, it makes everyone's lives just a little bit better. So with that, we're going to walk through a quick little activity. Um, this activity will be meant to help you understand what are you most passionate about and maybe help you start thinking about potential career paths. So I want you to take a pen and a piece of paper. And I'll pause for a minute for you to go get it. And if I'm talking too fast, you guys can always pause the video and rewind and we can uh, catch you back up. All right, so now what we're gonna do is an activity that's called mind mapping. So mind mapping is basically where you take all of your thoughts in your mind, you put them on a piece of paper and you start to see where things could potentially lead. Um, we use this a lot when I'm working with our suppliers and we are problem solving with them because we want to take all of their ideas, put them on paper and see if we can help solve a business problem with it. So we'll do something like the fact that there might be hydraulic leaks at a supplier. We'll know that their brakes might be leaking and we need to fix the leaking on the brakes. So what we'll do is we'll walk through this activity with them, talk about all of the areas that could be leaking. And as we talk about all of the areas that could be leaking, we're going to move into another diagram called fishbone diagram 
And as we work through the fishbone diagram, you'll see how it can really help us solve a problem. So the first thing I want you to do is to take the center of your paper, and I want you to think about something that you're really good at. So are you good at math or science? Um, are you really good at helping out someone? Are you super talkative? Um, think about a skill that you have, and let's put it here in the center of the paper. For my skill, I'm going to put that I, I really like to teach people things. So I'm going to put teach in the center of mine. So as you put it in the center of your paper, then you're just going to draw a circle around it. So it says the word and then has a circle going around it. Then I want you to think of all of the things that might be related to it. So for example, think about something else that you're good at. So if I have the word teach down, maybe I like to teach math. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write the word math. I'm going to draw a circle and I'm going to connect it. So now you see I have the word teach and I have the word math right next to each other. And then maybe I also like to teach things like presentations like this. So I'm going to put down presentation in the next one. So you see here now I have teaches in the center and I can either teach presentations or I can teach by teaching people math. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to write a couple more things that might be related to this topic. If you have the word science here, maybe you can have biology going off of one and then you can have chemistry going off of another and then maybe off of science you have things like that you really like to garden. Um, that's part of science, so you could put that here. So think about a few things that are important to you and put them going around. You should have about four items here. All right, so here on mine, I have teaching, and then I can teach things like regular school subjects like math. I can teach people presentations. I like to teach people about supply chain, and I also like to teach people about how to volunteer in their community. So you see here, now I have four circles coming off of my main circle because each one of these four ideas is connected to my main idea. So then what I'm going to do is I am going to take one of my ideas and I'm going to talk about things that are related to that. So for example, I have the word teach here and then I have math. So what types of ways could I teach math to people? Well, I could teach it by becoming a teacher. And that could be something like teaching in an elementary school. It could be teaching like becoming a professor. It could be teaching all different kinds of ways. Another way I could teach math maybe is by becoming a tutor. So I'm going to put down the word tutor. And this is actually something that I did when I was in high school and in college as I was a tutor for math. So I was able to help teach other students how to become good at math. So maybe that's a, another opportunity for me to put down. So coming off of your small circle here that says math, you can put down things like becoming a tutor or becoming a teacher. Think about a few more things. So another way for me to teach math is through engineering. By becoming an engineer, I can help teach people about math and I can actually do it by applying it. So I'm gonna put down the word engineer here. So now you'll see I go from teacher to teaching about math to becoming an engineer. Now off of the word engineer, let's think about some things that might be related to being an engineer. So being an engineer, there's all different types of engineers. There are electrical engineers, and there are mechanical engineers, and then there's engineers like me where I am an industrial engineer. An industrial engineer means that I work to solve problems to make things more efficient. So now you can see that I go from teaching to math to engineering, and then it goes 
uh, you know, electrical, mechanical, and industrial. Well, industrial engineering is the one I'm really interested in. So coming off of the word industrial, I'm going to talk about maybe I want to be an industrial engineer at a big company like Oshkosh Corporation. So I'm going to put down Oshkosh Corporation. Or maybe you want to become an industrial engineer at a company that builds schools and you want to do it for volunteer work. You can put that down. So do you see now, I went from having the idea of teaching all the way to the idea of wanting to become an engineer at a big company like mine. So by doing this activity, you're able to take all of the thoughts and connect them onto a piece of paper. Because normally, if I told someone, hey, I like to teach, they would tell me, well, great, you can become a teacher. And maybe that's not exactly what I want to do. So by doing this, you're able to take something that you're good at and see how it can connect to something maybe you're passionate about. So maybe you said that you were good at crafting. Well, if you're good at crafting, maybe you like to do any type of um, arts crafting. And maybe that means that you like to use the app Procreate and you love to draw on an iPad or a tablet. Well, that could be very similar to doing graphic design work. The drawings that you draw are probably similar to drawing a logo for a company or drawing any sort of business presentation. So maybe by doing this, you'll start with the word crafting and then you'll move on to procreate and then you'll start to see that you um, like to do graphic design work. And so maybe you want to explore having a career in a field like marketing. Um, taking something like this really helps you take all of your thoughts you put it on paper and see what makes sense. When I first learned this tool, I learned it in school because one of my teachers was showing us how to write a paper. So we started off with the main topic of the paper, and then we had to talk about like each one of the different paragraphs of the paper, and then each one of these became sentences in the paper. So it started off maybe saying we were going to talk about um, uh, I don't know, mythical creatures. And one of the creatures here was unicorn. And then here we talked about how the unicorn went on a, a, a scavenging hunt or something. Um, you were able to then take all of your ideas that were brainstormed on the paper and write about it. So this idea can be used for so many different things. You can use it to think about what you want to eat for dinner. Um, so let's do a more simple one about what we want to eat for dinner. So in the center, we're gonna write down the word dinner. And then you can have all different types of food, right? You can have Italian, you can have Mexican, maybe you have Chinese, and American. So you'll see here I had the word dinner and then I put in um, all of the different types of food type that we just listed off. So now when you think about the word Italian, you can have all different types of Italian food, right? You can have something like authentic Italian, which might mean that you're going to go fly to Italy to go get your dinner tonight. Would that be nice? But maybe you decide that flying to Italy is a little bit too expensive and you don't want to go fly all the way for your dinner tonight. So maybe you want something more local. If you have local Italian, you can have things like maybe you make some pasta out of your pantry that you have at home. Or maybe you're going to go to Olive Garden tonight. So now we went from having dinner, talking about Italian food, to talking about the fact that we're going to eat locally because we don't want to hop on a plane tonight. And you know what? We're going to go out to Olive Garden tonight because that sounds really good. So there are so many different ways to use this and it's such a simple, easy tool that can really help you uh, figure out how to be more efficient and brainstorm all different kinds of activities and ideas. So that was it for my 30 minute presentation. Um, so to recap, I want to encourage you to use this mind mapping tool when you're starting to think about what you want to do for school, um, whether it's a school project that you're working on now, somewhere you want to volunteer, or even thinking about if college or technical or trade school is right for you. So start to map it out that way. Um, then I want you to think about how you can give back to your community. Is there somewhere that you can volunteer that you can help out others? Is there something that you can do that can um, help give back? And then I want to encourage you to give back to someone. 
So what's one nice thing that you can do? It doesn't have to be something big. You can be going and raking the leaves for your neighbor. You can be helping your mom by taking out the garbage. Go do something nice that can help out others and just continue to have a life filled of really great things like that. And I guarantee you, it will help you become very successful. So I want to thank you for attending today and I wish you the best of luck and I hope to talk to you soon. Bye.